Welcome to this episode of Small Bike Stuff. If you want to see videos about small bikes, go and watch the rest of my videos because this one is going to be about my subscriber count and how we just cracked 10,000 subscribers. Congratulations to me and congratulations to all of you. Uh, why would I say congratulations to you? That's because I think that uh, anyone that watches this channel is a huge part of what has been created here. But I'd like to talk about why it took four and a half, nearly five years to get to 10,000 subscribers here on Small Bike Stuff. Now, creating a YouTube channel is a ubiquitous thing in the modern age. There's lots of people doing it, and even more so after the kind of whole break the world had with COVID and everyone's kind of come back refreshed. I think a lot of people reevaluated their ideas and thought, hey, you know, if they can do it, I can do it too. And uh, I noticed that on my last trip through Southeast Asia in the end of 2022, November and December, I was going through Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. And there's a lot more people doing what I was doing, holding a camera at their face and talking to it than you would uh, than you would usually expect. So how do you stand out? How do you kind of make a niche for yourself? And um, do you really need a massive subscriber count, I guess is the real question. Um, is there any point to doing it? If you don't have a lot of subscribers, there'll be lots of things that we'll cover in this video. So let's jump into it and uh, have a bit of a chat about the existence of my channel and, and where it came from. So Small Bike Stuff originally wasn't going to be Small Bike Stuff. Small Bike Stuff came from me wanting to see more motorcycle, or small motorcycle related videos in English language after watching Ed March's uh, Malaysia to UK trip, which he filmed in 2011, and it was available on a website called Dirt Punk for a while to buy. You could buy, it might even still be that you could buy the physical uh, MP4 file, and it would send it off, uh, send it off a download link, and you could download that. And I watched that while I was living in Southeast Asia still, and you know, I was exposed to these bikes, but I hadn't really made them a massive part of my life. Um, it was when I was faced with the choice of, well not the choice, but faced with the reality of needing to come back to New Zealand and I didn't want to leave the world of small bikes behind that I bought a Honda Cub or Honda C50 uh, on our version of eBay which is called Trade Me. I had someone else from my family go and pick it up because I wasn't in the country yet and it was a basket case and I tried to put it together and kind of failed miserably. Um, I needed to get back overseas so I ended up flicking off that, that bike and uh, yeah. That was kind of the end of my first small bike story. The channel itself, I came up with the idea in the start of 2000 and, or the, 2017. 2017 was when I thought about it. I didn't make a channel until 2018. And I think my first upload was December 31st. I think it was New Year's Eve, 2018 going into 2019. And that was a video that I had filmed on a trip to Bangkok where I went to the local cub house. Uh, and that was in July 2018. I released it in December 2018. So you're looking at six months for me to make my first video and release it and put it onto the page. When I was making small bike stuff, I was trying to find a domain name that I could kind of get at the same time. I went for bike stuff because I didn't want to narrow myself down to a niche and we'll get onto niches soon. I didn't want to narrow it down too far because then you're kind of limiting your audience potential and, and eventually you just kind of run out of people that want to watch the content because there's only so many people into a specific niche. The domain name bikestuff.com was already bought and it was being re-offered for sale for about 50,000 US dollars and they wouldn't entertain any offers less than 20,000 US dollars and I was just like no. Uh, chucked the word small in front of it and I think I got that domain name for $15 US and I've still got it. Um, I did actually remove the Small Bike Stuff website but if you go to smallbikestuff.com it now flicks off to Moving Our World which I'll talk about soon as well. Uh, so yeah that's how the Small Bike Stuff channel came to be. That was a bit of a ramble but let's get on to some actual physical points. Um, number one I'd like to talk about content consistency so how frequently I uploaded content over the past four and a half years and why that might have changed or helped direct my subscriber count through to 10,000 that I've got now, um, which, you know, on the scheme of things is still a pretty small channel, but I mean, there's bajillions of channels out there, so, uh, with, with nothing on them, uh, with one, two, three subscribers, so I guess, you know, if you had to put all of the YouTube channels in this space, I'd be probably somewhere around the middle, um, I, I would imagine, it would be really interesting to see, but I originally just uploaded when I had stuff to make, um, I would go out and ride bikes and, and use a GoPro 8 is what I was using at the time, and just try and make videos and no microphone, nothing like that. And uh, it was okay. It was a bit difficult because I didn't want to sink any money into it. Um, I was retraining in my uh, career 
And so, you know, I was trying to direct my finances into another realm. And eventually it got to the point where I learned about kind of camera quality and audio and all this kind of stuff. And I learned after a while that if you're putting out something that's unwatchable, then no one's going to watch it. So uh, for the first few years there, things are definitely a bit dicey. Um, it wasn't until 2021, I believe, I uploaded every single week or I tried to upload every single week throughout 2019 they were sporadic 2020 sporadic uploads then into 2000 and the end of 2021 um, I got to a consistency level where I was happy with but I was getting a bit burnt out um, I'd run out of things to talk about I guess within my own small bike world at that point I needed some new inspiration and I kind of left, left the whole channel and ditched it and I think that's a significant part of why there's only 10,000 subscribers now. And I would like to preface that by saying that I love, like I don't care if I've got one subscriber or a million. Uh, I make these videos, and I'll say this to anyone that asks, I make these videos for me. And it might sound a bit selfish, but if I'm happy with them, then that makes sure that I'm happy to continue making them. And if anyone else likes watching them along the way, then I'm stoked, you know, a thousand views is incredible. A hundred views is, is amazing. If you think about a hundred people sitting there physically watching your video, it's, um, it's a mind blowing prospect. I think I've got nearly half a million views on my largest video on, on YouTube and um, that was just a combination of algorithms, timing and, a, and a, a topic that everyone wanted to learn about at that point in time. So stopping uploading is what I'm getting to. Um, if you stop uploading for a large period of time, all your algorithm stuff just kind of goes out the window. Um, I'm not an expert on algorithms, but I know that it, it, it needs consistent, solid uploads. You look at big channels like, you know, dare I mention it, Casey Neistat, his massive upward trajectory happened when he started uploading daily and he'd been doing weekly uploads or something before that so people want to see stuff if they like watching your content they want to see more of it and if there's more available then they'll continue watching it so I guess that's one kind of aspect. I made another channel called Moving Our World because I wanted to focus on anything and everything it wasn't just small bikes and um, I did put a whole bunch of effort into that channel for a majority of 2022 but uh, became a bit um, obsessed about small bikes again. So I went on this holiday, I went through to Southeast Asia, um, I went through Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand and um, it just, yeah, really refreshed my outlook on the world of small bikes and just kind of made me want to continue doing it for me and then um, sharing these videos and hoping that there was a bit of an audience out there for them. So yeah, uploading regularly is important. I didn't always do that and I definitely do it now and I notice how much it helps yeah absolutely if you start making videos about something like uh small bikes then you really are limiting yourself in a few ways and that's not to say you shouldn't do it it's just that there's only ever going to be so many people that like small bikes you know i live in new zealand this is a nation of five million people of that five million people an arbitrary amount maybe 20 percent are interested in motorcycles of that 20 percent of five million only maybe another 20% of that uh, amount have only ever like even touched a bike, no, physically never even started one or sat on one. And then the amount of people that are into motorbikes in New Zealand and actually riding them, the percentage of those people that like small motorbikes and actually are obsessed with them and, and wanna watch physical content about them, it really does um, get to a small number of people. But uh, I, I think you really just need to do something that you're passionate about. And uh, you know, there's channels out there of people cutting lawns um, doing their free mo Wednesdays or Fridays or whatever they are. There's a, a American channels, there's Australian channels, and these guys have millions of followers and get millions of views on every single video of cutting grass. So um, I love that. I genuinely do. I watch them too. What I'm saying is there's an audience for everything. Yeah, definitely create channels. Uh, I'm not saying don't go create a YouTube channel. I'm saying definitely do it. If you've got something you're interested in, it could be making bread, it could be knife sharpening. Uh, it could be concrete consistency. I don't know, you just need to make a channel about something you like and continuously work on that. I think there's two kinds of content creators out there. There's people that like creating content and there's people that want to be seen. I consider myself to be the first one. In fact, I think a big part of my lack of significant, really huge growth or anything like that is because I didn't want to make myself the face of the channel. I didn't want to make it about me. Uh, and I still don't, but I am slowly letting off my guard and, and, and letting myself kind of be more of a focal point of the videos. Not myself, but just, you know, just letting my knowledge seep through um, about things that I do know about because I have been around these small bikes for a long time. And while I don't know everything, you know, I've got a decent, well-rounded 
formal knowledge and that goes hand in hand with a new series that I've just started which is small bikes around the world where I get people to film their bike uh, in their front yard in their driveway uh, on the street outside their house at the local park wherever they can flick me the videos and then I uh, will edit them together and kind of give people more context about why that bike exists and what scene it's in and where they've come from and what country they're in and what the bike scene's like there so uh, if you want to do that there is a template video you can jump into my social media Facebook or Instagram and flick me a message and I'll, I'll throw you the template and then we can have your bike on my channel community engagement so if you don't have a large amount of community engagement then the channel is almost never going to grow uh, and I know there's a lot of channels out there with a lot less subscribers than me that have really incredible engagement um, and it's just a sign of these people being genuine putting content out that relates with people people wanting to engage with it and encouraging engagement back and forth as well I've kind of always just made my videos and put them out there and then uh, or back in the day I'd make them put them out there and then forget about them whereas these days I you know once a week on the weekends I'll jump into my channel and have a look at my unanswered comments and go through and try to reply to almost every single comment that I can I love hearing about what other people think and kind of getting different opinions coming my way and um, just conversing with different people about small bikes it's um, it's really really interesting especially because this community of small bikes is centered around so many nations that don't have English as their first language so if you're getting a comment from someone in uh, in the middle of Africa or someone in South America or you're getting a comment from someone you know in Indonesia or and they're putting a lot of effort into to write your comment in English it's um it's it's actually genuinely one of the most rewarding things I love I love talking to people about their bikes um, and and yeah I wish I had more time for it because sometimes I can't get around to all of them so back in 2018 yeah uh, in my personal life I wasn't really um, sure what I wanted to do career-wise and I was kind of working with motorcycles in my spare time and also doing it uh, sorry working with motorcycles at full time and then in my spare time also working with bikes and I guess that contributed to the 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 burnout that I had in 2022 about small bikes and just kind of stopped uploading there for a while and you know I even made a video saying what happened to small bike stuff and I think I've delisted that now because it's no longer relevant but I just needed a break and uh, I had a break and I feel good but um, my growth as a person um, I just kind of have honed a niche with content creation and um, I do stuff like that for my full-time work now. Would I like to do full-time video content creation? Yes. Um, about small bikes, maybe. I, I do like the idea of sharing people's stories and sharing stories um, that doesn't always have to do with small bikes either. So there's a lot of things out there that I would like to explore and, and make content about and um, maybe one day I'll get to. We'll see. Um, you never know. I guess another side of personal growth um, with myself is my editing skills. Now I'm by no means a perfect editor and there's a lot to be desired when it comes to my video creation but learning the simple things like clean shots, clean cuts, cutting out excess stuff, um, making your video. Most of these videos that are 10, 12, 15 minutes long on my channel or even less have started out as like 30 minute, 40 minute rough draft and I'm just cutting out all the ums, the ahs, the repetitions. If I'm showing someone starting a bike, I don't need to show it three times again later because you've already seen that. And um, in this day and age, especially so, humans are super visual creatures. Uh, attention is dissipating with our entire global population. So you've really got to capture that attention. And if there's not constant visual stimulation on the screen, then I guess people kind of shy off it. Um, so... There's people out there that won't watch 10 minute videos. They just will not. So I, uh, it is what it is. I create a lot of shorts these, these days and try cater to those people and hopefully I can capture someone or one or two people from a short and um, throw them onto my longer form videos, which I'm much more proud of. So really focused on just making my videos easy to edit. So these days I try to shoot a lot cleaner to have less editing, whereas back in the day I just shoot whatever and then spend a long time editing. So yeah, I've kind of honed that down. Audio is the big thing as well. I'm using a microphone here at the moment. Uh, audio, 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 audio. I cannot stress this enough. If you're making a YouTube channel, figure out how to get good audio. I'm not amazing at it, but I'm trying really hard because there's nothing worse than <laughs> listening to someone's video that sounds like that, you know? It's just full of, oh, my microphone's gone a bit, a bit silly. Ruining the Stroker's hardware logo. The audio is really important and there's nothing worse than listening to someone's windswept wind swept video and recently I did put a video out that had too much wind noise, the Hyasung uh, FX110 and I almost didn't release it but it did end up getting an article written about it which is cool so maybe it wasn't so bad after all but um, yeah audio is, is really important as well as uh, 
as well as video. And these days you've got things like these DJI, DJI mic systems, which you can plug into an iPhone or, a, or an Android phone really easily and just capture the audio really crisp from a phone. So you can go out there with literally your phone and make an incredible video. In fact, my DGR 2023 video, most of that's filmed on an iPhone. Is there anything that I've considered externally that would have created an impact on my channel? I guess Honda bringing out the small retro range, the Honda CT125, the Honda Monkey 125, the Honda Supercar 125, the Honda DAX 125, and all of those niche Honda Monkey 125 specialty models, you know, the One Piece bikes, the Dragon Ball Z bikes and all that kind of stuff that they've made, Astro Boy. Uh, there's so many, there's so many different custom classic bikes that are coming out of physical shops now, so they're not even having to be customized by yourself. You just jump on it and ride it and you've got a bike that nearly no one else has. My highest viewed video is the CT125 review and that came out at a time where lots of journalists were getting a hold of the CT125 pottering around a small trail or pottering around a car park or pottering around a small city on the tarmac and then saying, yeah, it's, I guess it's okay. And I just, as a, as, a, as a deeply passionate small bike enthusiast, was severely offended. Even some of my journalist heroes that I won't mention had some pretty poor reviews of the CT125, um, but that's okay. I managed to hook up a really good situation with a shop that no longer actually is a Honda dealer, and they just let me go out on a bike and absolutely mash it. So I went as hard as I could, riding through rivers, um, getting as wet as I could on the bike from the river crossings, just no cares in the world. And I filmed it all with just a single GoPro and um, had an amazing time. And that video to this day has a lot of cuts. You'll notice I talked about that before, how I used to just shoot everything and have a lot of cuts. So it's got too many cuts, it's almost like, uh, 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 if you're watching it, it's kind of, um, it's not actually that visually pleasing for me these days. But um, yeah, I guess I did ride that bike like a maniac and answer a lot of people's questions. And another video that came in to be highly viewed was the XRM125. So thank you to the Philippines. Um, Pinoy Pride. I love the Philippines. I haven't been. Uh, the Philippines is a great place though. And there's a massive population of people there that have a good understanding of English that love small bikes. And New Zealand was lucky enough to get one of their models, the XRM 125. So we got the XRM 125 as an exclusive farm only bike. It was not road registrable because it didn't have ABS. But doing a review on that bike, it's, it got quite a bit of traction. Um, other views that have got quite a bit of traction, uh, Twist and Goes from Lance, a friend of mine in Auckland, Julio. Um, we just honed some of his fast-ish, not super fast in the scheme of things, Honda Dios. And that um, the, those videos got quite a bit of traction there. So the CT125 video, came out at a point where everyone wanted to learn about it and it wasn't available in the US. The staggered release of the CT125 around the world has done wonders for that video's traction. It's still, to this day, the most viewed video every single month on the channel, which is pretty interesting. Challenges and setbacks that I've faced along the way. Uh, I wouldn't say that I've faced challenges and setbacks along the way. I just faced, like I say, that burnout. Um, I do run a group for small bikes within New Zealand that was around long before small bike stuff And that was a place where I just kind of created because I didn't have anyone to ask about this Honda C50 basket case that I'd bought when I came back to New Zealand for the first time And I, uh, I just wanted a place to kind of bounce off other people ideas and, 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 and that turned in the middle of kind of 2022-2021 and turned into a bit of a cesspool to be entirely honest with you. It was around that whole time where a lot of people were kind of getting up in arms with being told what to do by specific groups or governments or people or whatever and so anyone else that told them what to do like a moderator of a page who just kind of deleted their posts because it wasn't within the page rules they just kicked up against it and um, and it got real personal and got real negative and I really didn't enjoy that and that was probably a big contributor into me not wanting to make small bike videos for a while but you know, there's only so much you can let people live rent-free in your head. So, I, you know, I haven't really thought about that or considered that for a long time. But, you know, when my points here say challenges and setbacks, that's probably got to be one. Um, how did I stay motivated to keep creating content? You just got to keep doing it. You either do want to or you don't want to, and you've got to make that choice. And if you do want to, then there'll be moments that you're making content when it's difficult and when it's hard. When I went out to ride to the DGR recently, I didn't want to. I couldn't be bothered that morning and I went out and did it and I'm happy with the progress and I loved the video and it was fun and I threw the drone in the air and got a couple of cool shots and I had another photographer reach out to me to ask if they can use the drone footage. So you know everything works in roundabouts, um, you've just got to work hard to make yourself happy and I think that's kind of the main concern. Yeah I guess that's really about it, I've rambled for far too long here, um, why did it take me four and a half years to get 10,000 subscribers? Because it did, I don't know. Um, I'm happy with it. I think it's cool and uh, I'm really really stoked and it'd be cool to see if it takes another four and a half years to get to 20,000 um, 
Will I ever get to 20,000? Who knows? We'll, we'll wait and see. But like I say, I make these videos for me. I'm happy with them. And uh, I continue to look forward to releasing these videos and I will do. You really do never know where your audience is gonna come from. I like to think about how I found out about Mr. Beast. You know, he had millions and millions and millions and millions of viewers, um, millions of subscribers on all his different language channels and, and I only found out about him when he did the Squid Games reenactment in real life. I didn't know who he was before then. So, you know, um, even someone who's as popular as that, you know, it took me a long time to find out about them. So it just kind of proves to me that you never know where you're going to get your next um, a watcher from or next audience from. I even had a really cool moment before we go recently where I reached out to Moog from Muddy Car Mods and sent him a video of my Honda Trail story, the origin with Herb Yule. And then I also sent him a link to my um, Malaysia to Thailand video and he, he replied with a selfie of him watching it which was super cool so I think that alone you know gave me fuel for the next 12 months straight so yeah I won't be going anywhere you'll be seeing a lot more videos thank you so much if you are one of the subscribers I would like to use this opportunity to talk about channel memberships I do have a channel membership it's about three New Zealand dollars per month if you live in America that's almost free basically it's so close to me paying you that it is almost you receiving money in the bank account that's how cheap it is and uh, if you pay for this channel membership, it's $3 a month. Uh, I'll give you at least 24 hours access to every single video that comes out. It's a cool way of supporting my channel. I did have a Patreon for a while, but I've removed that and I've moved everything to channel memberships. So if you want to support this channel, you subscribe. Um, that's a big one. Uh, like my stuff and, and comment below that community engagement is huge. And if you don't have any community engagement, generally your videos kind of won't have a, a, a big flow on effect and kind of get those larger view counts. So... Yeah, um, commenting, subscribing, sharing videos to your friends if you genuinely like them and think they're cool. Um, you know, there's people out there that I watch religiously and there's people out there that watch me religiously and I really think um, any of us that watch a channel religiously and support it, uh, there's channels out there that I support and subscribe to and pay monthly donations to as well just because I, yeah, I'm in the thick of it so I respect it and understand it. Uh, okay, that's about it for this video on small bike stuff. Uh, I could make a video about how much money I make per month on YouTube. It's about 200 New Zealand dollars, 250 New Zealand dollars. Um, and in the scheme of things, I think in four and a half years, um, you know, I didn't make money for the first few years there. So I think it's 5,500 New Zealand dollars in four and a half years. So that's what I've made. I've spent more on equipment and trips in that time. So it's definitely not a thing to get into if you're looking for profitability. But um, if you're looking to have a good time and share your view on a niche subject within the world, go for it. We'll see you next time on Small Bike Stuff. Please comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz, everything I've just talked about. If you made it to the end of this video, that's amazing. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.